Oiga esta frase. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you know who would say. Welcome, Brashear Baptist Church, Sam Hall Bible Study Class. I am Sam Hall. This is my lovely wife. Connie Hall. You almost forgot, didn't you? Well, I was bending over. Got you. Connie Hall. Is everything ready now? Yes. We're doing a, I don't know if it's live. Are you live? I'm alive, I'm alive. And, okay. and you're live. Yes. And Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. That's why we're here today, because our Savior has risen from the dead, as we're going to read today. Mark chapter 14, 15, and 16. Let's get started rather quickly, because on this here video, we have a, uh, oh, I see the, the numbers up there now. We've already gone, uh. One minute, 37, 38, 39 seconds. And don't worry about time. I can edit. Oh, she can edit. So go ahead and start. Oh, go ahead and start. Okay. Uh, Mark chapter 14, verse 32. Uh, to set the scene real quickly, uh, I do encourage you to read all of the chapters. We're not going to read all the chapter verses. We're going to read uh, the one that I have circled for the time allotted. Uh, for today, but I encourage you to read of what's going on in these chapters and this account is so very important It's in every one of the Gospels written four different times by four different people four different times of their lives four different times in the world So it's a uh, rather important the resurrection of our Savior. Amen. Amen Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. And they came to a place which was called Gethsemane and he saith to his disciples sit ye here while I pray now, if it's important for Jesus to pray, I guess it's important for us to pray, too. Pray. And he, Jesus, taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And the word heavy there, he's in distress, great distress, distress of mind, distress of emotions, in distress of all around him, okay? And because he knows what's about to happen. And saith unto them, Jesus tells them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. He is grieved all around him. There's just great sadness. You can feel it. It's, it's a, he can feel the sadness. Tarry ye here and watch. We are to watch. What are we watching for now? For his return. For, yeah, we're watching for, uh, for oh. our... Go ahead. Well, it was in the garden before, right? Well, this is true. We'll, right. we'll go on, yeah. Uh, and he went forward a little and fell on the ground. This is Jesus. And prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him. He is praying to his heavenly father who is in heaven, listening, watching all of the circumstances going on down here. And I have to remind myself when I'm reading through these gospels, through this account of what agony, physical brutality, torture, torment that this man, the Christ Jesus, our savior, the son of God went through. I have to remind myself that this is pleasing the father. This pleased him because he loved us so much. He loved me so much. Those that would call upon his name, those that he has called out. And folks, I have to remind myself too, as I read ahead in Ephesians chapter 1, when Jesus prayed this prayer right here, I just wonder at this time if he didn't remember, which I'm sure he did, what he and his Father and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, had already uh, discussed before time. That when he raised his hand, he said, you know what? I'll go. I'll do it. Here he is. It is now the hour that he has to do this. But in his flesh, he's praying that this hour just might perish from him, just go away. But he said in verse 36, he said, Abba, Father, Daddy, 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 all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. But here it is. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou will. Folks, Jesus did every step of the way, every part of his life during his growing up, during his uh, time of being a carpenter, uh, uh, Joseph, a carpenter's son, everything that he did was according to his heavenly father's will. And now then, for the last three, three and a half years, every step of the way, he has done his father's will, and it has led to this part right here in Gethsemane. Now, he is now uh, betrayed by uh, one of the inside men, uh, old Judas Iscariot, uh, before uh, before Caiaphas, the high priest, and the, uh, the, the some of the chief priests and some of the other leaders there in this trial that they had uh, and convicted him to be guilty of death. Uh, and now in 14, uh, 61, at the end of C verse 61, he says, he's asked this question, art thou the Christ, the son of the blessed? And folks, he cannot 
deny himself. He is who he is. Read 65 there for us. Uh, 62, I'm sorry. And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So he is telling right now already what he has told his disciples. See, this is he is looking ahead about what's going to happen after what happens here in the next few verses. He is looking ahead after that. Now, when we see him, when the world sees him coming in the clouds, it's going to be at the uh, ending of the Battle of Armageddon. So he is now fulfilling, he's telling them about a prophecy that he is going to fulfill. Turn back a page. This is the verse I was talking about a while ago, uh, 14 and 27. And said, And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd. Now, who is the shepherd? Jesus. Jesus the Christ. He's the good shepherd, great shepherd, chief shepherd. And the sheep shall be scattered. We are his sheep, and we hear what? His voice. His voice. His sheep hear his voice. Uh, but after that, I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. He has told these people several times up to this chapter. He's already told them three times, i got to go to Jerusalem. And when I'm there, I'm, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and finally I'm going to be crucified. And they keep denying it. They go, oh, no, it can't happen. It can't, you can't do this. Well, now is the hour. Uh, so we read on uh, Peter's denial of him from 66 on. Then we get into chapter 15. Jesus is before Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the, the, uh, the leader, uh, the ruler of this area that, uh, that Rome has sent out, Caesar has sent out in this Judean area. Uh, and then now, then let me read a little part to you here in verse uh, 16, starting in verse 16 of chapter 15. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him, Jesus, with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! Now, did they mean that? No. No, they were making fun. They were mocking this man because he has been claiming to be the King of the Jews, and his followers are saying, This is our King, the King of the Jews. But look how he, what his situation is now. He's standing before them humbly, silent, and he's been given, the order has been given to beat this man. Okay, this is what's going to happen. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. They're mocking him now. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Why purple? It's the... Color of royalty. royalty, absolutely. And the next few verses is Jesus is crucified in 21 and on. He is put on the cross, and he is put on the cross because of my sin and because of your sin. Because what has happened from the early pages of Genesis, where a prophecy is now being fulfilled, Genesis 3.15, where the first prophecy says, I will put enmity between thee and and this seed and then that seed. Well, this seed here is the one that we hold on to. The other seed of the enemy was prophesied that you are going to bruise his heel. And now then on the cross, when he's being crucified, his heels, his hands are outstretched and his crucifixion is going between his, his wrist and his hands. He's been beaten. He's been plated with a crown on his of thorns on his head and now then when they put his feet on there they drive that nine inch spike between his heels surely this now is being fulfilled but what is the what is the mount called other than mount calvary what is it called the place of a skull the place of a skull golgotha well the other part of that prophecy is now being fulfilled because jesus the lord the son of the living god our savior is bruising the enemy's head aha Hallelujah. Amen. So the death of Jesus in 33, and when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole uh, land until the ninth hour. Now, by my calculation, if I can remember, that's from noon until three. What's usually going on from noon to three on any given day? It's, bright it's, sunshine. Yeah, the bright sunshine. Sure enough, especially day. in this area, uh, in this uh, Judean area outside of Jerusalem. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why has he forsaken him? Why does he feel forsaken on that cross? Well, we read about what's just happened. He's been betrayed by his fellow followers. He's been denied. They've looked at him and even cursed and said, No, 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 I don't know him. Now he is alone on the cross. 
He is the one, this is the difference between any other crucifixion and what Jesus is, what's taking place here with the Son of God. He is lifted up on this cross. There's a holy God in heaven looking down, and there is a world of sinful mankind. And his blood is being shed because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And he knows that. It's almost time to stop, but we got a few more verses left. Do we have time? Yes. We've got 11 minutes. That's a good little beaver. Ooh, I thought I turned it off. Anyway, <laughs> he, he is now saying, why has thou forsaken me? This is why. My sin. Your sin. So believers, and he is also going through this too, because the writer of Hebrews says, he will never leave us nor forsake us. That's right. Because he has felt all of this, and he knows how it feels. So you and I today as believers, you out there in video land, if you know the, this, this Jesus of this cross, of this Jesus of this resurrection, of Jesus of the Son of God, you will never be forsaken. Persecuted, yes. Felt alone sometimes, yes. But not alone because you have the Holy Spirit in you. Mm. Let's read on. Verse 37 of chapter 15. It says, And Jesus cried with a loud voice, and he gave up the ghost. The ghost there that he is talking about is the very, uh, the, 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 what precedes, everything that proceeds from the ghost there, the motion, the life, the senses, everything else, as you read back over in Genesis chapter 1. This ghost, he gave up this ghost, he died on the cross. His heart stopped beating, his brain stopped thinking, he had no pulse, his blood was just about completely drained out of his body. And when that old Roman soldier came up there, because it was about time to not have them on the cross anymore, uh, they said, make sure. So they broke the other one's legs. But what happened when they looked up at Jesus? He was already dead. What did they do to him? They stabbed him in the side. They, put that, they pierced his side, and what came out? Blood and Blood water. Blood and water. Hallelujah. What mercy and grace, even on the cross, uh, because of the cross, what our God in heaven has showed us through this man, Christ Jesus. Now then, uh, uh, later on it says, uh, in verse 42, uh, 42 of 15, it says, Joseph of Arimathea, he was also a follower of Jesus Christ, an honorable counselor which waited for the kingdom of God. And that's what Mark talks about a lot through his uh, messages is the kingdom of God. Came and went to the, boldly into Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. 46 says, and he brought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him up. Now that in this fine linen he has taken him and he has put him in his own personal, unused, borrowed tomb, sepulcher. He has taken the body, he has put him in. Well, in the next chapter, in verse six, uh, verses 2 and 3 and 4 of uh, chapter 16, is uh, wonderful the rest of the story, the old Paul Harvey saying. Because if we just left it there with Joseph of Arimathea taking the body, wrapping it up, putting it in his, in his sepulcher, well, that's nice and neat. But my goodness, why are we sitting here today? Why do we Why do we go to church? Why do we do what we do? The rest of the story. Yes. Are y'all interested? Well, I hope so, because I've got uh, exactly two minutes left to say it. <laughs> and very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at uh, the rising of the sun. Now, the scripture says S-U-N, but I wrote in my margin S-O-N-2. S-O-N-2, the rising of the sun. Why? Because Jesus has risen Amen. Okay. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the uh, door of the sepulcher? You're a little late on that one. Well, it was the sun too that oh, okay. threw me off. That, but that, you were studying on that. that and when they looked, they saw that the stone was very heavy. Uh, it was great and heavy. And verse 5 says, in entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And uh, they were frightened. Now, this is who? An angel. An angel has come down to tell them the good, good news. And he saith unto them, Be not affrightened. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Isn't that wonderful? That all of this has now been being fulfilled. He has done what he is supposed to do. And if the Ephesians, if, you, if you're interested about what was happening during those uh, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, and early Sunday morning. Well, during that time, preceding in, in, that, in that time that's going on from the cross to the resurrection, Ephesians tells us that, you know what he did? You remember the story? He's setting the captives free. Setting the captives free, absolutely. This man here is the first fruits. Christ Jesus has, is now fulfilling even more prophecy 
by taking those souls of the ones that have believed in him and trusted in God on to glory. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Set in captive free. Are you captive today? If you're captive, this man Christ Jesus can set you free. If you are free, you need to continue to seek Jesus and his will in your life. Now let's read on. Verse 11 says, And they, when they had heard that he was alive, they didn't believe the, the report of uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary, and the rest of them. They didn't believe. Well, we still have that today because they remember exactly what had just happened just a few hours before, a few days, a few nights before what had happened on that cross. They were grieving and weeping and sorrowful about what happened to their master, the rabbi. Mm -hmm. But now then in verse 15 it says, And he, Jesus, said unto them, they're gathered around now, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. That is what we are here today to do. Thank God that we have this capability. The room is empty as far as souls and, and, and bodies being in here today. There's usually about 20 in this particular class. But we have, high, I don't know how many the Lord's going to send us out to. But listen to this. Christ Jesus has risen from the dead. He is alive today. He is offering salvation. If you are one of his children, praise him for that. And know he has you in his hand. And you can never be taken away. You will never be forsaken. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He died for us. He rose from the grave because John's gospel said that he had that ability given to him by his Father to lay down his life and also the power, the resurrection power, to take it up again. Amen. And we too have that also, whether we go to the graves before he calls us home or if we're in the graves sleeping, resting at ease in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, when we hear that trumpet sound, we are with our Savior. There is hope today. There is hope. There is a resurrection Christ Jesus. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. Thank you and amen. If you want, if you